Now it's my great pleasure to welcome the first of our two keynote speakers, Dr. Kathy Watecki. Dr. Watecki is the Undersecretary for the USDA's Research, Education, and Economics, REE, mission area, and she serves as the department's chief scientist. In short, she oversees the USDA's most critical research areas. Prior to assuming her position as Undersecretary, Dr. Watecki served in a variety of public and private leadership roles. Please consult your program for more details on her impressive and varied background. Now, please join me in welcoming Dr. Watecki to the podium. It is for me truly a thrill to be here uh, at this meeting. Um, looking forward to when the NBAF is uh, fully completed and commissioned and operational. And between now and then, we've got a lot of work to do, uh, not only in the construction, but also in the conceptualizing of the program to be built uh, in anticipation of uh, the uh, laboratory being open uh, for business. And as you could hear uh, in the brief introduction that uh, Dr. Truen gave, I, I have a really broad portfolio at USDA. The, the responsibility for most all of the research, uh, the single, singular exception to that is Forest Service research, and also the statistical agencies, uh, NAS and, and ERS. Uh, and in that capacity, um, there are actually interests throughout the mission area uh, in the NBAF, uh, the kinds of research that will be done here, and also the broader implications for American agriculture of protecting our livestock from new and emerging diseases as well as those that exist in other countries and to date uh, are not present here. Uh, so it's really exciting to be here at the site of what is going to be a state-of-the-art facility uh, that's critical to protecting our nation's food supply as well as the livelihoods of farmers and ranchers while protecting public health and the U.S. economy. It closes what are really important capability gaps that stood to affect our ability to provide such protection. And it's also going to provide the infrastructure around which a new techno technological corridor is going to be built here in the heart of America's farm and ranch lands. And I want to thank the state and local leaders as well as the researchers who've been participating in the conceptualizing of the program here and all of our colleagues in the Department of Homeland Security for their efforts and partnership in bringing about this really needed research facility. Within um, my mission area, though, there are two agencies that have a, uh, a specific interest in, uh, in the NBAF. Uh, one of them is the Agricultural Research Service, and you're going to be hearing from some of our leaders in ARS. And the other is our partner agency, uh, the uh, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service that's in the marketing and regulatory programs uh, mission area. The NBAF, with its enhanced level of security and improved research laboratories, is going to enable the Agricultural Research Service to expand its foreign animal disease program. It will now include priority biological disease threats, um, like the Nipah virus, and potentially dangerous new and emerging diseases that may threaten American animal production in the future. NBAF will enhance USDA's animal and plant health inspection services capabilities as well to perform confirmatory diagnostic testing for foreign animal and emerging diseases of livestock as well as the responsibility to train veterinarians in the recognition and diagnosis of foreign animal diseases. It's going to enhance the work of our National Institute of Food and Agriculture as well and APHIS in supporting the diagnostic labs that are located at land-grant universities across the country as part of the National Animal Health Laboratory Network. I should also note that we have a really great working relationship with our colleagues in the Department of Homeland Security. 
collaboration and partnership between USDA and DHS is really essential for the bringing us to the point that we are today and also for the future of the NBAF. Um, when I came into this position five years ago, um, it was at the point in time when the Congress was still considering um, whether to provide the appropriation for the NBAF. And I worked very closely with Under Secretary Tara O'Toole in advocating uh, on behalf of the funding for NBAF and uh, have also had the opportunity to work closely with uh, Under Secretary Reggie Brothers now that uh, it is a reality. Ground has been broken and um, the uh, active uh, construction of the MBAF is underway. Uh, but I should also tell you that uh, the Department of Homeland Security has been a great landlord for us, both for APHIS and for ARS at Plum Island, and how enormously important it is DHS's commitment to the continuation of good operations uh, at what is an increasingly difficult facility to keep operational uh, at Plum Island. Um, DHS and USDA have also worked hand in hand throughout the concept and the design phases for the NBAF, and I can tell you it was with great regret that I was not able to actually be here for the groundbreaking last week. It was something that I, uh, last month, I, it was something I had really looked forward to. Uh, the NBAF is going to include an added capability with the biotechnology development module that's going to enable collaboration between researchers in the pharmaceutical industry to increase the successful transfer of vaccines and other veterinary countermeasures to the private sector for development and licensing. And I'm gonna say a few words at the end about public-private partnerships, but I think it's very important to underscore here that as part of the conceptualizing for the NBAF has been the building of those public-private partnerships. At USDA, much of our research is focused on finding solutions to the unprecedented challenges that are facing the global food and agricultural system. These challenges include producing enough safe and nutritious food for a growing population, adapting to changing climate, as well as conserving our natural resources. These are the priorities in the research that's done through both the intramural as well as the extramural programs at USDA. And each is really a complex challenge in and of itself. I would argue that our continued commitment to animal science and health research is actually more important now to the world than ever before. Indeed, the first sentence from a recent report from the National Academy of Sciences says, and I quote, reinvigorating animal agricultural research is essential to sustainably address the global challenge of food security. But how do we sustainably produce enough safe, nutritious food while we're seeing a clear convergence of many of the challenges that are facing agriculture on the horizon? Though they've always been interrelated, today many health, food, and natural resource related issues are coming together to create what I've called a, a perfect storm. And the connection is actually through agriculture, our primary interface with the natural environment as we work to feed ourselves. The air we breathe and the water and the food we ingest are essential for life. Safe, nutritious food and clean, plentiful water depend on healthy, sustainable agricultural systems. And as our weather conditions become more erratic and our climate continues to become warmer, we're also going to need to realize that these changes are going to bring new challenges to animal health and to human health. Insect pests have already moved uh, north into areas um, where we have not experienced them before and are affecting our forests as well as croplands. We're also experiencing new so-called tropical zoonotic diseases in the southerly regions of the United States. These diseases are on their way progressively northward 
And the NBAF is going to have to focus some of its work on zoonotic diseases um, like Rift Valley fever that would not have been considered to be um, a, a, a threat here in the United States in the past because of our severe winters, but now are going to have to be watched for both animal as well as humans being affected by changes in climate. This perfect storm is also intensified by changing public values that are related to the ethical treatment of animals in research, coupled with an increased disconnect between an urbanized public and farming. And these issues are playing out against a backdrop of really skyrocketing public demand for meat and poultry and eggs and dairy products. In a shrinking interconnected world with a growing population, Serious challenges to our agricultural system show up at an ever faster rate. According to the Centers for Disease Control, about three quarters of recently emerging infectious diseases affecting people are diseases of animal origin, and approximately 60% of all human pathogens are zoonotic. Animals and foods of animal origin can be vectors for the transmission of these diseases as well. So there are food safety implications. Since December, we've confirmed cases of a highly pathogenic avian influenza affecting more than 40 million birds in both backyard and commercial flocks in the Pacific, the Central, and the Mississippi flyways. No human cases have been detected to date, and the CDC considers the risk to people from these highly pathogenic avian influenzas to be very low. But it's an example of how we need to be adequately prepared should a similar type of disease affect large livestock herds. And NBAF will give us the capabilities to address and respond to emerging animal diseases, and we would also hope to play a major role in prevention. Greater collaboration between human and animal health professionals is essential. And USDA research is going to play a dual role in the protection of agriculture and the protection of public health, producing science-based answers for decision making. We're bringing together experts from animal science, veterinary medicine, food safety, nutrition, wildlife, plant sciences, economics, ecology, biotechnology, and other agricultural and health disciplines to set priorities for the research programs to be conducted here. And I frequently like to think about the kind of research that's going to be done here as really being the front line of public health. We, we frequently do not talk with the public about that role that this type of agricultural research plays, but it really is a front line of public health. We've embraced the One Health approach throughout what we're doing at USDA, recognizing that the health of humans is connected to the health of animals and to their environment. And we're proud of the contributions our research has made to human and animal health and directly to producers, consumers, as well as to the environment. Two current examples of this engagement are the Global Health Security Agenda and the President's recent executive order on combating antibiotic-resistant bacteria. USDA, in partnership with the Department of uh, Health and Human Services, the Department of State, uh, and the National Security Council, uh, together with countries around the world, have recently launched the Global Health Security Agenda, an international initiative to address global health security. And the thing that's really unique about this global health security agenda is that it's focusing on emerging diseases of humans as well as of animals as being national security threats and therefore is being coordinated uh, by the National Security Council. While our main goals in the global health security agenda are to slow the spread of antimicrobial resistance, to reduce zoonotic disease transmission, establish national biosecurity systems, increase routine immunizations, strengthen national infectious disease surveillance and laboratory systems, and develop real-time electronic reporting systems and emergency operation centers. USDA is pursuing this global health security agenda 
in the context of our overall mission. That mission includes developing and preserving a sustainable global food and agricultural system. In support of the global health security agenda, USDA is collaborating with a, a wide range of agencies, including our colleagues in Homeland Security and the Department of Defense, as well as Agency for International Development, uh, the Department of State, uh, and Health and Human Services. There are also a number of international organizations that are involved. Uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the World Organization for Animal Health, the OIE, and the World uh, uh, Health Organization. One previously mentioned major global health security challenge receiving considerable attention recently is the threat of antimicrobial resistance. There are many pathways among people, animals, and the environment connecting resident bacterial populations in one population or setting uh, to those in another population or other settings. The One Health Working Group at USDA that's composed of senior scientists from the Agricultural Research Service from APHIS and from the Food Safety and Inspection Service have worked together on this issue actually for many years, uh, going back decades, um, each performing very specific but interrelated tasks, from research on alternatives to the use of antibiotics, to monitoring, to inspections that supplement but actually don't duplicate any of the work that's being done in other agencies. And despite these efforts, there's a lot more work that remains to be done. Earlier this month, uh, the White House convened a national forum to seek action on the problem of antimicrobial resistance. The development of antibiotics was one of the most significant medical achievements of the last century and has helped to save millions of lives. But their overuse or their misuse has resulted in the rise of bacterial strains that are resistant to antibiotics. The White House has unveiled a national action plan designed to advance the appropriate use of antibiotics in food animals, as well as to promote collaborations among partners in human medicine and veterinary medicine and public health in a manner consistent with the One Health approach. USDA, which helped develop the national action plan, was pleased to join our many federal partners and to continue our work with the agricultural industry at the forum. And we continue to research alternatives to antibiotics, including vaccines, to reduce the use of medically important antibiotics and to develop new tools to prevent and treat diseases that affect health, welfare, as well as production of livestock, poultry, and fish. And through our shared goals, USDA is going to continue working with our colleagues in the agricultural industry to optimize the stewardship of antibiotics in food animals. In addition, collaborations among partners in medicine, veterinary medicine, and public health are being promoted to support a One Health approach to the issue of antimicrobial resistance. Through this multidisciplinary approach, USDA's objective remains to preserve, maintain, or to reduce health risks to animals, humans, the environment, and society. Obviously, technological advances are providing new research tools and opportunities that afford scientists a hitherto unprecedented ability to design vaccines to solve specific problems. Scientific discovery is delivering promising new vaccine candidates, new tools, new technologies to take on seemingly intractable infectious diseases. But there's a need to further integrate the development of vaccines and diagnostics. Vaccines are lacking for many human and animal diseases, including African swine fever, uh, Ebola, uh, human in immunodeficiency virus, even though decades have passed since these pathogens first emerged. Effective vaccines are also lacking for common infectious diseases affecting livestock and poultry. Additionally, there's need for veterinary authorities to challenge vaccine research and manufacturers to develop vaccines that are not only fit for purpose, but are designed for control as well as for eradication. A better understanding of the immune systems of farm animals will allow us to improve the effectiveness of vaccines. 
This is an area that universities and other research institutions can address outside of the NBAF and in the process can improve the protections that NBAF can provide. There's a great need to better understand the host immune system's response to different pathogens and how pathogens evade the immune response. The comparison of the immune systems across animal species will lead to novel biotherapeutics as well as enhancing the effectiveness of vaccines. That National Academy report that I quoted the first sentence from earlier um, and which we actually help to uh, support uh, financially uh, makes it clear that now more than ever we need to reinforce our commitment to animal science and to conduct that research in a socially acceptable, ethical, and humane manner. The report speaks directly to the perfect storm confluence of challenges I mentioned earlier and it speaks to our concerns about animal welfare and the need for understanding and respecting societal concerns about food animal research, whether it's performed in the Agricultural Research Service or in another government laboratory or at a university or in a private sector facility. The report also calls on agricultural researchers and practitioners to learn from the successes and the mistakes of the Green Revolution to design and to conduct more successful research that optimizes animal protein production while minimizing environmental, social, and economic impacts. We expect that uh, the developed world's demand uh, for meat and poultry and dairy products is going to continue uh, and at the same time that the developing world uh, will also create a, a, a huge demand for poultry, eggs, uh, goat and dairy cattle as well as protein sources that are sustainable. Food security in this growing population of which we are all a part is critical and we also must assure that that production systems that uh, we have in place are going to be sustainable into the generations ahead. We certainly want those systems to be resilient to climate change um, and uh, efficient uh, and providing lean, high quality, health promoting food product uh, for consumers in socially responsible ways. I think it's also very important that uh, as we're looking forward uh, to the completion of the NBAF, its commissioning and in the beginning of the the research that's going to be performed here, that we also um, create public-private partnerships that are going to be supporting the uh, research that is being uh, conceptualized now and that will be leading to a successful program of research here at the NBAF. I know that this discussion of public-private partnerships is a theme that's going to run through discussions today. Uh, and in closing, I, I wanted to just mention to you an article that uh, has appeared in the most recent journal of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, I had the opportunity last week to participate in a meeting of three of the um, professional societies in food science and, and human nutrition, along with uh, a public-private partnership, the International Life Sciences Institute, uh, that uh, all four organizations have signed on to a set of principles uh, governing public-private partnerships. And at the event last uh, week at the National Academy of Sciences, the uh, whole uh, event was around uh, their commitment to this set of principles appearing in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. So I commend the article to you. I think there's a lot of good ideas in it about uh, what, uh, uh, from many decades of experience, uh, are a set of principles that in food science and human nutrition look to be good indicators of success for public-private partnerships and that probably are transferable into other areas of uh, food and agricultural research. The, uh, 
Department of Agriculture is unwavering in its resolve to use practices for animal health and welfare um, throughout our operations that meet or exceed recognized quality practices and at the same time to create a safe, nutritious, sustainable, competitive U.S. food and fiber system for producers as well as for consumers around the world. We believe that this new facility um, is going to exemplify this commitment. And I want to thank all of you today uh, for your part in, uh, at the beginning, uh, making the research program at the NMAF uh, a reality. And I thank you for your time today and your participation in the lively discussions of today and tomorrow.